boy, is it amazing over there. Yes. China going to leapfrog America in terms of self-driving because they have the ability for the government to make super fast decisions? That's what people tell me. Uh, I'm not sure about that. It's def definitely a, a very efficient decision-making process, and there's absolutely strong support from the government side, yeah. from my understanding. I think that's very helpful for the industry there. Mm. So you think it'll happen there faster? Uh, it's moving absolutely very fast. Uh, yeah. But, you know, there's also a lot of other things, uh, advantages that Silicon Valley and other places has. Yeah, tell uh, us. Like uh, the um, uh, talents and mm. the AI um, and also um, infrastructure. There's mm. a bunch of other advantages. Got it. Show us another exciting video. I, I found these videos fascinating. And you can hit the pause button when you see something interesting in the video. Um, and, I, and I have the questions I was going to ask you queued up as well. But I, I feel like when we watch these videos, we're going by them a little bit fast. So I want to pause on one of them and you can tell us what's going on here. So here we are. We're going down a street. We see a bunch of um, a 3D model of the world, including down to the trees and the leaves. Right. This is, uh, this is a 3D uh, reconstruction of the street we uh, created. You can see clearly see the color on the ground. Um, and it's actually a 3D model. Uh, we drive the street up and up and down a couple of times, and then we can create this. Then we can view it from any angle we like to. Mm. And you do this with one of those cars with all the sensors on it? Right. Got it. We use a bare minimum set of sensors to make this kind of a map. And uh, what, is, what is the detail level that you need to create uh, a map that is capable of being safer than a human. Do you feel we've already done that? Are we already safer than humans? So, um, I don't think the self-driving car system is safe. Uh, so it's depend on uh, which which one you're talking to, right? Uh. There's a plenty of company working on this. We are, we're not making the whole thing. We're just making the mapping right. and localization piece. Mm. It's a very important piece, but it's not everything. The whole thing, yeah. We needed the whole thing to work very tightly and mm you have enough redundancy at every level to guarantee the safety of a self-driving car system. Ah, uh, the redundancy is key. So if you lose GPS or if you lose still a camera. Works, still works. Not right. doing anything crazy. <laughs> the car is still running or, you know, safely handle this kind of situation. And, and what's going to happen in the future if we're all sleeping in our car and it loses a camera at the same time that a GPS signal goes out for some reason? What will happen? Your alarm will go off to take over or it just pulls over to the side of the road and flashes its flashers? What, what is the protocol, you think? Uh, I believe that eventually there will be remote controllers of uh, operators of this vehicle's in emergency and uh -huh. um, human interference is necessary when situations happen. So something unexpected happens and you'll basically hit, uh, an alarm will go off and in some boiler room there'll be a hundred drivers sitting there taking over and saying this is your remote driver everything's going to be fine i'm pulling you over <laughs> to the next starbucks yeah. would you like a latte like it's going to be that simple it's uh it's probably not that uh, similar to that i think it's mm -hmm. like uh, basically uh you, you this is like a, my imagination so uh when you have a car actually not working and you know it's pull over and the remote control will try to jump in and fi figure out what's what went wrong, or maybe they'll send another car come over and pick up, mm. pick up you, uh, or the stuff. 